Good morning and happy Sabbath to you, our friends. I thank you all for being with us again. You join us as we worship our God Almighty, whose righteousness surrounds us. As God is the only God, the Holy God, the everlasting Father, our Creator, and the God who heals and protects us. Please join me as we seek God in prayer. Father God, our only God, our everlasting Father, our burden barrier, our God who heals, the God who answers prayer and our Creator. Please bless us as we worship you today. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Before Dr. Frias will talk to us, we'll first listen to our seniors, friends from across the borders. How great thou art. Please join us. <laughs> This will be the uh, topic of our study this morning, uh, Footprints of God. 
I hope that uh, we will be blessed as we study this today. And before we start, shall we all bow our heads for prayer? Father God, uh, we have come to this time again where I would like to declare your name to the world. I pray the Father that uh, please anoint me, anoint me, touch my brain and touch my lips, so that everything that will come out of it, uh, of them, will all be from you. I ask that you will bless our program today. I ask this favor in Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Footprints of God. You know, I have talked to some people in this world who do not believe that there is a God. They don't believe about God. They say that uh, if there is a God, how come there are so many young children who are dying innocently, they haven't done anything wrong and they die early. And how come that some people are good, but they die young. And uh, sometimes they say, I don't believe it. Because... Uh, they say that, you know, God does not intervene at all with a lot of things. There are lots of problems. Like even in this uh, epidemic right now, this uh, COVID-19. If there's a God, why does he not do something about it? We're going to study about that. Uh, the explanation, I try to give them a explanation, some explanation that's based on my opinion. Although... To me, I think it makes sense. I tell them that, uh, see, when God created uh, this world and everything, even human beings, everything was perfect. Nothing was wrong with it. Uh, there's no defect at all. The man, Adam and Eve, that he created were supposed to live forever. There's no uh, defects at all in their bodies, no sickness and so on. And uh, even the trees, or everything, the animals. There's nothing wrong with them. But when sin came, uh, things that he created uh, because of sin, they fall into sin. Adam was supposed to be uh, responsible for the earth, whole earth. When he committed sin, everything became defective. All the creation of God became de defective. And one illustration that I was able to give was this uh, photocopy machine. Okay? A uh, photocopy machine, when it's brand new, and nothing, nothing's wrong with it. Everything looks fine. Everything looks fine. I mean, whatever copy it uh, produces, they're almost the same as the other copies. They're all almost perfect. No, it's not blurred, the color is just right. It's perfect. But if something goes wrong with the machine itself, Everything, usually, everything that comes out of it, there's something wrong with it. Sometimes only half of the page is copied. Sometimes only one-fourth is copied. Sometimes it's so blurry and so on. So this is an example of uh, children that are dying young. It's like coming from a photocopier machine that is a photocopier that is defective. And instead of printing the whole thing, it just comes out maybe... Uh, one third or uh, one fourth or partly or sometimes nothing just all blurred uh, these are the babies probably who die yeah, an example because if you read the Bible if you go to Deuteronomy 28 Deuteronomy 28 God mentioned about blessings and curses God said that if you obey me if you keep my commandments I will give you blessings Blessings. Blessings to you, your children, and to your generation. And then, but if you disobey me, I will, you will have curses. And he mentioned the curses. If, if you go to the commandments of God in Exodus 20, he said that the blessings and curses go to as far as four generations. So if you, uh, if you do good things all the time and so on, uh, the effect of that, the consequence of that will be good. Maybe your children will also grow up to be good children. And their children, if they remain to be good, the third generation, the second generation, third generation to the fourth generation. But if uh, those children, if you are who has the 
root of everything, uh, you did bad things and so on, there's also a consequence. It, the consequence will go to your children, to your, the children of your children, to the fourth generation. Like if you're a liar, your children will turn out to be liars. If you are cursing all the time, your children will be the same. It will go to the fourth generation. That is why if you care for your uh, loved ones, if you care for the children that you're going to have, and there are children and children, then you're going to uh, try to obey God. Obey God and be straight in your life so that it will be blessings from one generation to the other. Now, just in case you happen to fall, uh, maybe a second or third generation of somebody that has uh, uh, planted bad seeds, maybe your parents or foreparents are drunkards or, or disobedient to God, you can stop the curses that will go to the fourth generation. You have to change, be with God, and somehow God can correct it. Uh, God can repair anything so that the blessings and uh, the curses will not go anymore to your children and to the fourth generation. It will stop right there. Like if you are an idol worshiper, yeah, of course, uh, your children will learn the same thing. Your children will also be worshiping idols. And all of them will be worshiping idols all the way and it will never stop. That is why many people, they get used to tradition and they cannot change anymore. I don't know if I mentioned it to you one time when I gave a Bible study to a couple uh, who requested, the husband requested a Bible study for me. And when I went to their house, the uh, wife said, why did you request a Bible study from Dr. Frias? Did you know, you knew that I taught uh, theology at University of Tanto Tomas, he said. That's the, what the wife said. I've been a teacher there. I was a professor there in theology for 30 years. I taught many people there to become priests and to become nuns. So I know the Bible very well. So why did you call Dr. Fies to give a Bible study? So I said to her, uh, well, anyway, don't worry about it. Uh, maybe I can learn from you because you're a professor. You taught for 30 years. I haven't studied the Bible as long as that. But I only try to learn the Bible uh, basically on what it says. And I try to, uh, I believe whatever it said and I do accordingly to what it says. I try anyway. So we went to a Bible study. But when we were going through the Bible study, she was getting stuck. Uh, when she says something, from the bar, when she says something that is the teachings of God, and I said, where in the Bible can you find that? A lot of times she couldn't find it in the Bible. And especially when, when we went to the subject of Sabbath, when I, told him about, when I told her about the Sabbath, the Sabbath is so overwhelming in the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, Sabbath. In the book of Acts, it was mentioned about almost 70, 80 times that uh, the period, the Disciples have been keeping Saturday Sabbath every week. And even when Jesus Christ left, Paul was still keeping the Sabbath. 70 years, every seventh day of the Saturday. And I told about the Sabbath. And I showed, and then we went through the, and she said, but uh, Sabbath was also mentioned. This is the first day of the week. Uh, worship was also mentioned in the Bible. So we went through it one by one. There are about nine uh, where people meet every first day of the week. But it did not say anything that they meet there to, or to make it a holy day for God or make it the Lord's day. Nothing. Most of the meetings were they were to meet, to have a meeting, like they were to give goods to Paul that he can bring to another church. Nothing said at all about God changing the holiness of the Saturday Sabbath to Sunday Sabbath. No. So when she got stuck, and a few other things, uh, when we went to the subject of the dead, she got stuck a few times, you know what she said? Uh, you know, I have to admit to you that we base our belief on three things. She said, we base our belief on one, on tradition. Uh, two is on the inspiration, inspiration from God. And number three is the Bible. Although when we started, he said, we're going to study the Bible. It's only sola scriptura, I said. Only from the Bible. If we come up with any opinion that from the Bible, we should uh, uh, discredit it. We should remove it. So I said, we agreed on that. But when we were studying, a lot of things that she was uh, uh, coming up with uh, were not in the Bible. 
So she said now that it comes from tradition, inspiration, and the Bible. So the Bible was only number three. So I asked her, so if you have an inspiration that uh, is not in the Bible, and God said that uh, it's in the Bible, it says that Satan also has uh, spirits. That's why God said in Isaiah 8.20, if they speak not according to the word, the truth is not in them. So the evil spirit might be giving you inspiration. Like inspiring you, okay, the evil spirit comes to you and say, oh, you, you kneel down to this, this is God, and so on. I say inspiration, so you kneel down, and the Bible says that if you kneel down to any idol, you're worshiping the devil. That's what the Bible said. So, but you thought it's an inspiration from God, because you believe in inspiration, you do not check in the Bible. So, whatever inspiration you might have, you check the Bible. Uh, if, they, if they speak not according to this word, the truth is not in them. Always compare, always compare the word. Uh, and uh, what, because this word is very important, because the Bible says that uh, God's word is the judge in the end. John 12, 48. That whatever the Bible says, that is the judgment for you. You will know if you are going to go to heaven or not. You will know it. Because the Bible will tell you, if you're going along with what the Bible teaches, then you know that you're going to heaven. But if not, you know already, God, when God opens the Bible, now later on, what is your attitude toward it? You are not obeying it, you are not believing it. And God said that uh, not everyone that calls on me, not everyone that worship me, not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. But only those who do the will of God. And the will of God is are all here. The will of God is uh, do not worship any other God before me. That's the will of God. Do not uh, make unto thee any graven image. Do not bow down to it. Do not worship it. Because I'm a jealous God. And, uh, you're, uh, and the consequence of that will be from the first, second, third, or fourth generation. See? So that's the will of God. And uh, three, do not uh, call the name of God in vain. That's the will of God. Number four, uh, keep, uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days I'll give you uh, time to do your work, but on the seventh day keep it holy. I'm happy that there's a Sabbath because what happens is that sometimes you get too busy. I was uh, quite busy this week doing my work, but then I was seeing it's already four or five o'clock. I said to my wife, no, nah, we got to stop now. And what a relief when we stop. But if we were not Sabbath keepers, you know what? We could have continued on working, working, and even right now, probably. So we worry so much about things. And, said, and uh, God said, do not worry too much about these things, because if I even take care of the birds, of the sparrows, uh, when it's time to eat, they find food to eat, why should you worry? And I've created you in my image. See what I mean? So this is the uh, problem now. So the Bible study, uh, like... Uh, I'm, I'm very so, uh, sorry I did not talk about that, that person that I was given Bible study to, she got stuck and uh, she couldn't really defend what she was saying because she based it on tradition. I said, supposing your tradition, supposing your parents had a tradition that uh, uh, whiskey is uh, good to drink whiskey. So he said, oh, it's, it's, it's a tradition for my parents, so I'm going to be a drinker also. So, do you know what I mean? That's why, or if I'm, uh, uh, whatever, we learn from our parents, uh, if we find that it's not in the Bible, we should, we should uh, honor God more than anybody, more than our parents, because God created your parents. They have their own choices, see? So it's up to God about, for them, you know, like we, uh, our salvation depends on ourselves. So we're going to study is there a God or no God? You know, as we study, you will notice that God uh, left footprints of his existence all over. Now, uh, footprints of God in creation, for example. If you go to Acts 14, 15 to 17, God, it says that God had not left himself without witness. Okay? So God has not revealed himself to our uh, senses, for we cannot see him. That's why, of course, we cannot see God, so he did not reveal himself to our senses. Or we cannot hear him, so he did not reveal himself to our uh, hearing. Or we cannot touch him. 
she has not but he has not left us to group blindly uh, a confusion in confusion and doubt without any evidence of his existence uh, if you have read the book called the steps to christ by ellen white it says there that uh, god never asked us to believe without giving sufficient evidence upon which to base our faith his existence his character his truthfulness the truthfulness of his word are all established by testimony that appeals to our reason so all the evidences that god gave it appeals to our reason if you really look into it if you study it and this testimony is abundant what are some of the uh, evidence of God's existence and where do we find them okay we're going to study that today now but before that let me uh, uh, interject something like some people they don't believe God they don't believe the Bible but they believe in Notre Dame or they believe in the Vimsy and those are people who somehow wrote some things sometimes they think that they wrote uh, against what uh, what God said in the Bible. So I even think, I told God, I even think maybe Notre Dame, uh, some of the Notre Dame predictions uh, uh, were in the Bible. Some of them were true. Well, he probably read the Bible because the Bible, the writings of the prophets existed already during his time. The prophets had been writing them a long time ago. And uh, even during the time of John the Baptist, when we went to the Middle East, it says that John the Baptist uh, was preaching about God's word already. And uh, so some of the writing, uh, they became true because they probably read the Bible. Like when uh, uh, Dr. probably said, the word is round, he probably read it because the Bible said it's round. The, uh, that wind has no weight, of course. But they believe more Dr. Damos, and Dr. Damos is only a creation of God. So I would rather believe the Creator. Anyway, here are uh, footprints of God. Footprints of God on the earth. In Job 12, 7, God said, or Job said, Ask now the beast, the fowls, the earth, and the fishes, and they shall teach thee. So if you go to God's creation, if you look at uh, uh, the snakes, the fish, and so on, how they were made uh, uniquely, you know, with fins and so on, and all help to be able to swim properly in order for them to live exist underwater even for a long time they won't drown things like that for example the ears of the elephant and so on if you look at those things do you think that those uh, creatures they made themselves if you believe in evolution that means that they made themselves they create themselves there's somebody a uh, supernatural powerful creator who designed them and, and made them the way they are now Go to the, uh, consider the lilies of the field. Uh, look, uh, if, you, if you observe the lilies, the lilies comes in different forms, different colors. But they're so unique, beautiful. When you look at them, even the petals, the shape of one petal is the same uh, look, basically. They don't contradict each other. It's in harmony with each other. And the color, everything. They just footprints saying that uh, there is a creator who made them the way they are, to look beautiful, to give beauty to the earth, so that we who see them, we know that there is a creator out there, there is a God who made them. And uh, all around us, all around the earth, uh, and sea and sky, there are uh, countless evidences of order, beauty, accuracy, adaptation, and intelligent planning. Consider the marvels of creative design. Uh, for example, uh, these uh, crystals, the sky flakes, uh, the sky flake crystal. See, take a look at them. You see, when you observe them, whatever are the size and the shape of one here, it's also the same with the other one, the same, the same. All uniform. They look like uh, uh, pearls. You know that's why humans. Uh, try to make uh, pearls and stones out of this. They copy this design sometimes. They copy them. But who is the original? Uh, where did all those uh, beautiful shapes come from? 
from the original, from the creator, God. And they did not just make themselves like that. They did not just come in by accident. So take a look at the beauty and perfume of the flowers. You look at beautiful flowers. And how come that some flowers, many flowers, you smell them, they, have, they, smell, per, uh, be, uh, they smell good, perfume. And you know most of the perfumes that are made by man, uh, they taken from the flowers, the perfume of the flowers. So there's somebody who created that. Uh, uh, one time I was eating banana. It tastes so good. So I said, uh, I noticed that no matter how much people will try to make a banana, it, to, to make it taste like a banana, there's nothing. They can never uh, compete with banana. They can never imitate the banana that uh, God made. And that banana comes in plants all the time. It grows all the time so that we can continue to eat them. So there's a God who provides them. The butterfly, for example. Just observe the wings of the butterfly. So beautiful. Uh, here in the airport, we went to a butterfly sanctuary. If you look at that, it's so beautiful. So beautiful to look at. See? And that's why I could imagine in paradise, when we go to the new earth, they're going to be full of these beautiful things that God created. And then they will never disappear anymore. They will always be there. Because we will be perfect already. There's no more devil, no more sin, no more death. Because sin is the uh, curse of death, the result of sin. The wages of sin is death. And there's no more death out there. So we can enjoy our life forever looking at these beautiful creations of God, our Creator. And, and not only that, look at this uh, spider web. Uh, who taught this spider that in order for them to have a place to live, they will uh, create a web like that. And it just comes out of their saliva and they are able to connect them. And then it, uh, nothing goes wrong with it unless big wind blows them and unless to, you destroy it. But then they, they, make a, they make a house themselves out coming from their own saliva. Wow! You know, you ask yourself a question. Did they make, did the spiders make themselves? And how about the birds, and uh, feathers of the bird? Look at the beautiful feathers of the bird. You should go to some bird sanctuary and observe the birds. And you, if you take out one of the feathers, it's so light, almost, almost light. If you get a piece of paper and you uh, shape it into a feather, it will even probably be heavier than that uh, feather of the bird. But why is it so light? So that they can float up there in the air without falling down. They, they just carried by the air. So beautiful. And then the color, the colorful, the beauty of it. It's so uh, the uniform, different birds of different colors. And uh, a cup of corn. A cup of corn. Uh, I check the cup of corn. You know, the grain of corn, it is very nutritious. It's rich in fiber and vitamins and minerals. Every, every one of this. And God provided us this corn so you can eat them. It's a uh, uh, very nutritious and you eat corn you consume it and then it grows again and you eat again over and over that's how much God loves us so he provides us with all these things and it's so unique how come the corn they, they think they made uh, the corn made itself they grow up like that and then comes out again and over and over and the marvelous insect instincts of the mechanism of honeybee you know the honeybee they make, uh, they make uh, these honeycombs and so on. Uh, who, who, who taught them how to do that? Who gave them that instinct to do that? And so on. Now, uh, we also have this uh, miracle of bird migration. Here, uh, not far from us, about two hours away, there's a bird sanctuary. I forgot the name of that uh, bird sanctuary, but it's a bird sanctuary. You know, it's so unique. If you go there by around October, November, when it starts to get cold, you will see all kinds of birds. It's a big field, and the birds all meet there. They come in groups, sometimes a group of 10, 20, they come, a bunch. And they go there, and they sort of have a meeting. And they group together, different groups out there. They're having meetings. Probably they're planning where they're going to go, maybe. Because the time when it's going to be winter here, those birds coming from Alaska, from the north uh, part of Canada, north, it's going to be cold. So they come here, but they make this place in Windsor, Ontario, like a stopover. 
they start there, they have a meeting, and then they fly off to somewhere. Maybe they decide, let's go to Mexico. Maybe they say, go to El Salvador. Maybe go to Peru, to Chile. And we know that they go to different places because the owner of this bird chantoy, he plays some uh, text, and he attaches them to the, he catches some of this bird, and he attaches them to the uh, foot or the leg of these uh, birds. And uh, he attaches them uh, securely so that it wouldn't just fly off or something. And it says there the text, for example, God loves, uh, God loves you, things like that, and the text. And he put a, a note at the, at the bottom. <coughs> if, if you happen to see this bird, please uh, let us know, or please send back this piece of paper. And we got thousands of papers there that were sent back. And then tell us where, where you caught this bird or where it come from. Because some hunters, they shoot them and they cut them, and they see this on the leg, and they mail it to the bird center in Windsor. And some of them, uh, they were found in Arizona, some in California, some in Mexico, some in Chile, some in Dominican Republic, all of this. Usually they go meet there in Windsor, and they go to the warm areas, warm places. And sometimes they met their uh, the mess there, they die there, they get shot at someone. And, and uh, the birds are so intelligent. They meet, they meet among themselves, the same bird meeting together, and then they fly together. And when they fly, they are so organized, for example, like this. They form this V-shape. And there's one, there's a leader out there, leading. And uh, when the leader is tired, he goes back there at the back, and the next one there will lead. Whichever, you know. They're so organized. And so who gave them such kind of intelligence to be organized? Do you think they made themselves? It's by accident. And how about the bat? The, the bat, bat's radar system. You know, the bat, when it's born, uh, it's blind, it cannot see. And uh, the development of the eyes of the bat is very, very slow. So it cannot uh, see very well, as, just like the other creatures. But yet, the bat can, never hits something when it flies. Why? Because God gave them a radar. Radar system, that's why, that's where we base uh, the radar system that people invented, humans invented. Because the radar, they fly in the dark and they can find their way through this radar system that they have. Now, do you think they made themselves? Ask yourself that question. Now, I talked about the crystals and all these different things. I don't know if you have heard of a story. First of all, let me, uh, before I go to that story, let me go some more. Footprints of God in the heavens, according to Psalms 19.1. The heaven declared the glory of God. Okay? And then you go to Genesis 15.5. Look now. Look now toward heaven and tell the stars. Tell the stars. How did you get there? Who created you? You know? And uh, if you go to Nehemiah 9.6. Thou hast made the heavens... And thou preserved them all. So God made the heavens and he preserved them. So that it will be there. It will be there forever. See? Because even when this earth is burned, that those heavenly bodies will still be there. That's why when we go to heaven, or those of us who go to heaven, we will have an opportunity to visit those different uh, heavenly bodies. To see them. Actually, we don't have to fly through this spaceship and so on. Uh, we don't have to bring oxygen with us and so on. We can we can fly there. The way they are, because at that time we will also already be perfect being. According to Isaiah 40, uh, verse 26, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created this thing? Behold, if you lift up your eyes on high, ask yourself, how did they come to the world? How did they exist in there? In the heavens above, there are the same evidences of pattern, There's or evidence of order, uh, evidence of beauty, accuracy, and apparent purpose, which we see in our own world, only magnified to a breathtaking degree. Consider these wonders of the starry heavens, the enormous uh, areas, uh, weight, enormous uh, stress, the weights, the speeds, the numbers, the distances, the temperatures, and billions 
of planets, of the billions of planets that are out there in this, in this, uh, in the galaxy. The precise calculation and coordination of their weights, their motions, their speeds, uh, temperatures and orbits, the fine balancing of attractions and reputations and regulations, I'm sorry. The split second uh, timing, the perfect synchronization, the clock-like regularity, all maintained in a state of harmony by constantly operating, uh, operating laws and controls. They are controlled, they operate according to the laws and control of God. So, could this marvels of creation I still make you wonder? You know, if there is no God, if God is not there uh, taking control of these heavenly bodies, they will collide by them, with themselves, among themselves. And uh, they will destroy each other. But how come they are all there a uh, place and even the speed and they, they avoid each other because God controls everything out there. See? Now, it goes some more. Uh, look at uh, what, uh, for example, uh, footprints of God in our bodies. Take a look at our bodies. Take a look according to Exodus 4.11. Who hath made man's mouth, your mouth, to be able to speak? So how come when I open my mouth some uh, voices come out? Uh, have not I the Lord? According to Exodus. Uh, who made your mouth? I'm the one who made it. According to Psalm 94, 9, He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? See? So you doubt God, he, pl he planted ear on you. Do you think by putting ear on you, He himself who put ear on you, He will not hear you? He hears you, but you have to believe Him. According to Psalms 94, 9 also, He had formed the eyes. If He gave you eyes, do you think He will not see you? Sometimes we try to hide from God and think that he's not seeing us. Well, he gave you the eyes. He gave you the eyes to be able to see. Why will he not be able to see you? Psalms 130 verse 14. I am perfectly, uh, fearfully. fearfully and wonderfully made, he said. And if you observe a person's face, a person's face is about 8 to 10 inches in diameter. And yet in that small space, he was able to put the eyes, two eyes the nose, uh, the eyebrows, the uh, lips, and sometimes you have the beard and the mustache or whatever. Now, if it is human an artist who will make that in a, let's say this size of paper, and he will make imagination of different faces, he will run out of imagination. Maybe someday some faces will be duplicated already. But look at, we've been traveling the world many parts of the world, even to the North and the South Pole, how come that I have never seen a person that looks exactly the same carbon copy of another person? None. Everyone is different from each other, and then there are billions and billions of people. How come God, uh, if this is not a God, he doesn't, uh, he never lose imagination of what kind of faith to put. Some are similar to each other, but they're never the same. Even twins are never the same. I've seen quite a few twins already, and not, they're not exactly the same as the other. And so on. Now, in the human body, for example, there are the same amazing, amazing evidences of ingenious design, coordination, adaptation, and creative foot thought, foot, uh, foot thought, which we see in the earth and in the heavens. Consider the wonders of his body temple, uh, living self, the heart, the brain, the eye, the ear, the hand, the senses of touch, and the senses of taste, the senses of uh, smell, the nervous system, the digestive system, the prolonged and intricate miracle of reproduction and growth, the glands, the body's marvelous uh, defenses and healing mechanism. Just imagine those things that God has created in a human body. Uh, what shall we do with these uh, countless evidences of intelligent planning and uh, forethought of, in, in the earth, in the heavens, and in our bodies? We cannot ignore them. They demand a rational explanation. They have, some, uh, they have come into existence either by design or by accident. 
So some people say it's by accident, by evolution. I don't believe that. Uh, I believe that uh, we came here into existence by design. They are the product of God. Or uh, is it the product of God or is it because of chance? You have to decide yourself. There is no neutral ground. So let me ask you for the third time again. Could these marvels of creation have made themselves? Do you think human beings have made themselves? They just came into existence by accident. Look at the mystery and miracle law, even this one. Uh, when, uh, when you look at a man and a woman, when a man and a woman get together, a baby comes out. There's a reproduction. God even gave us uh, in participation to be able to in the participation in creation. That's why we make babies, that way we have children and so on. So look at that mystery, very mysterious, okay? Uh, countless evidences that we can see. And the designs and shape of the magnesium trees, sometimes they are tall and sometimes there are those uh, with very big trunks that uh, cars, if you go to some parts of California, you will see those uh, trees, that big trunk that you can even, uh, even cars are able to go through inside those trunks, through those trunks. That, uh, so these are marvelous things, even the shape, look at this tree, shape. You go to you see the shapes of uh, trees in Hawaii, for example, in New Zealand, we send them beautiful, beautiful trees. And even here in Canada, so many trees that are so beautiful, so big and so tall. Do you think they came by uh, they came by accident? And how about the uh, grandeur of these big mountains? Very big mountains. If you haven't been to, I urge you to visit uh, the beautiful mountains of Zion National Park. You go to uh, uh, Arizona. Go if you go to Arizona. Don't forget to visit Zion National Park. You see this big humongous mountain. And I, I, that, that's where I, you'll see God right there. You look at it, and they're so beautiful. If you drive through the highways of Oregon, for example, that you're driving through the highway, if you go, uh, when we were driving from Canada to California, and those big, nice mountains, red mountains and so on, they're so beautiful to look at. And if you drive through between Utah and Nevada, for example, you, you think you're in the outer space, you think in a, you're in another planet. Just looking at those big mountains, beautiful mountains, see? And there are the beautiful rivers, beautiful lakes, and beautiful waterfalls. How many of you have seen Lake Louis in Alberta? If you go to Lake Louis, it, the scenery is so nice, it looks like a painting in a big canvas. So when somebody painted a big canvas. Just looking at it, you can look at it all day and never get tired of looking at it. So God has designed it there to be there. And uh, uh, if somebody has drawn it in a, I don't know, as if somebody drew it in a very big canvas, I may say, as I've mentioned, and it's so beautiful, plus all the other views. You go to the, you go to Alberta and visit that province. Wow, so many natural beauties up there. Uh, the Banff, for example. Lake Louis. Lake, I mentioned Lake Louis. How about the beautiful images of sceneries of Bam? I mentioned that. Are they accidental or did God or did somebody design them to be that way? That's why when I came to Canada, I said, I, I said, I want to see all these beautiful places, you know. That I've always wanted to see beautiful sceneries, beautiful places, even when I was young. So I made sure. That's why when he came here and he started to earn some money, you don't have to be rich every time. We save money and we start traveling. And uh, so we've seen so many nice things. It's so nice for the eyes. And that made me appreciate, that made me uh, uh, really believe God. It's very easy to believe when you see all of these things, for example. But take a look at them. Then there are the beautiful oceans and waves. See? The oceans and waves out there, you can see. And also, there are also the big, humongous, beautifully designed icebergs. In the North and the South Pole, uh, God has blessed us. We're so fortunate that we were able to see the big icebergs in, in the North Pole, Alaska and so on. 
Uh, we've been to Iceland and so on. Antarctica. So on. And then not only that, to the bottom of the earth, Antarctica. Uh, we've seen bigger, bigger icebergs in the South Pole. We thought it was going to be warm. It's so cold. It's even colder than the North Pole. And the icebergs are much larger. Much larger. And then one thing you think about this, uh, uh, this iceberg. People say that we will have a uh, eventually all the icebergs will be gone because it keeps on melting. I don't know about that. Because we've seen when we were in uh, North Pole, in uh, North Pole and also in Antarctica, this, uh, this uh, iceberg keeps on melting, melting every second, 24 hours a day, and all the, as it melts, it goes, the ice are slushy, that's why the ship couldn't even go much closer because uh, we could be trapped in all those ice there. It keeps on melting. I don't know for how how long now. Thousands of years have been melting, but it never it never finished melting. See? So because there's God that controls all these things. The beautiful sunset, for example. Beautiful sunset. Uh, this this uh, this looks like a sunset in uh, I don't know, it, it, it's very similar to the place that we visited in the West Indies, uh, where there's a cove like this and but I forgot the place. And even sunset images in the cities, you know, some beautiful cities. This is in Rome. You see the uh, St. Peter's Cathedral up there. There's the bridge, the famous bridge there. And so on. And uh, sunset in the ocean, so and beaches. You know, there's a bit that uh, if we like to see a beautiful sunset, we go to it. In Mosaka Beach here. Beautiful sunset. When they, uh, we start to stay there till about till the sunset, because when the sun sets, from from what one end where the sun is, everything goes red, even goes to uh, you know to the place where we can see just above us. The whole sky becomes red. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. The beautiful beaches of the world, for example, exotic beaches of the world, and those beaches are there so that humans can enjoy humans you know uh, you know how uh, people enjoy in the beaches beaches are always crowded in Canada also always crowded in the summer uh, but you know the devil is really a very disrupted uh, disrupted uh, figure he disrupted us with this uh, coronavirus so we cannot even enjoy togetherness God has intended us to have fellowship with each other to be together and have fun with each other, to encourage each other and talk about God. But this coronavirus came, so people aren't even allowed to be together, they aren't allowed even to go to church and worship. Now then the question is, why did God allow it? Well, God allowed it somehow, because if God does not allow it, it will not happen. God allowed it because of well, two things. Because this world is so sinful already. Uh, they get together, but not to worship God. They go together to in order to watch uh, a rock concert. When you call about rock concert, it's mobs and mobs of people. When you call them to come and gather together to talk about God in church, not very many are interested to do that. See what I mean? So that is why God allowed it. Because now, when people cannot get together, a lot of them stay home. So they cannot, people can continue committing sin. Uh, being in clubs, night bars, and doing all sorts of uh, crazy things. But, of course, they cannot continue also worshiping God, but they can still worship God, even uh, without being able to have fun. Some people get so uh, lonely and uh, stressed out or because uh, they get so bored because they cannot go out and have fun. But for those who believe in God, it doesn't matter. We have fun. Look at this. Even if we are not allowed to go to church, we are able to preach the gospel. We are able to share God's word to people. Which is fantastic. And if you go to your uh, to the screen of your TV, of your uh, Facebook, of your YouTube right now, so many people are preaching right now because it's God's day and God's people are all preaching out there. Uh, not all, but many of them are preaching out there. So God allowed it for people to realize about God, about how loving he is that even in spite of this coronavirus, he can still take care of you. He allows things to happen. So people cannot, uh, but one day when God uh, pronounces, it is finished. 
and you will just keep everything loose. You can continue to be simple, you can continue to be holy. And uh, we're looking forward to that also when the time comes, if you are still. So uh, this time, so many people are hearing about that. Like uh, uh, the president of the uh, Western Mindanao Mission talked to me the other night uh, that he said that he would like me to do a, an evangelist scientific seminar even through this uh, way, through online. So we plan to do it the first week of December. So uh, people who are out there in the Philippines, he was out first of the first week of September of December. Uh, we're gonna have a, a nightly presentation of about God and His uh, um, and His wonderful uh, mercy and grace of saving the lost. So if you would like to learn about God more. And you can still learn it right now. You go to my YouTube. Go to my YouTube. Uh, just uh, search for Noel Frias. And then when you Noel Frias comes out, go to the playlist. Print uh, the playlist. It will give you Bible uh, study lessons. Bible study lessons. 1 to 15. If you study that, you will know a lot of uh, what the Bible teaches about roadmap to everlasting life and so on. But if you like, you can also... Uh, click subscribe so you can also help us uh, in our YouTube. Anyway, the flowers of Victoria BC. You visit the flowers, the beautiful orchard gardens of flowers in Victoria BC. All of this. Now, let me tell you about the story that I was gonna uh, tell you earlier. Uh, here, I'm gonna read it so that uh, it, the story will be told very well. Did you, I don't know if you heard about the story of the watch that made himself. Says, you know, this the title, the watch that made himself. It goes like this. Late one evening, one night, Joe Brown woke up with an uneasy feeling that something unusual was going on in his bedroom. He lay very still, listening and wondering. Presently, he heard faint scratching and clicking noises from the direction of the uh, dressing table. Reaching for the torch, he, uh, he, uh, shown, he has shown the beam toward the mysterious noises. Joe's eyes bulged. What seemed like a miracle was happening on top of his dressing table. He scattered, he scattered around the uh, surface were parts of a watch. But the curious thing was that they were not lay, lying still, like actors in a play. They were all <coughs> they were all dancing uh, about as if they were alive. The case of the watch was lying face downward, and the other parts were scrambling into the case and snuggling uh, into it in a correct position as if directed by some invisible intelligence. While Joe watched uh, open mouth, the, the main spring, the hair spring, the balance wheel jumped in and they adjusted themselves with perfect precision. Then sundry minor uh, cogs, uh, wheels and plates appeared, all in a correct order. They took their places and they lay still next to a swarm of screws dance up and they hopped in and screwed themselves deftly and snugly into place. The back cover clicked itself on with a sharp snap. Then the incredible case, the whole watch flipped itself over and on its back. Face, hands and glass fitted themselves uh, ex expertly into position. Finally, the winding staff appeared. It slid smoothly into place. It gave itself a few brisk winds and then the watch began a rhythm. Tick, 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 tick. Now the question is that, do you believe this story? Do you believe the story that uh, the watch made itself. Uh, uh, the, like the Joe has dreamed about, 
the watch was facing down and all the different parts were scattered all over the place and they were they inserted themselves into their own places there and uh, even the screws scored themselves in the same places and eventually it flipped up and it started to uh, work like a watch now a finished watch now he said so the question is do you believe the story well to me the story does not make sense yet such a fantastic impossibility on a watch that made itself would be a small miracle instead compared to the eye, the ear, the heart, the brain, and the universe that was made. So, if you think that a very small place like this uh, could not make itself, how much more uh, if you think of more complicated things that God has created? The eye, the ear, the different organs that we have, the atoms, why don't they fly apart? The human cells and the universe that God has made. See? So the watch put themselves together and they became the way they are. Do you believe that? Oh, only a fool would believe that. I wouldn't. And I hope you don't. Can a watch make itself? That is the question. A watch made itself? So in conclusion to our studies, according to uh, Paul sums up the evidence of God in these decisive words. If you go to Hebrews 3, 4, it says, For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. God is the creator of all things. Honestly now, can you find any fault with this conclusion? Can you find any fault with the conclusion of Paul that God, a supernatural, overall, powerful being, is the one responsible who created everything? It is only a rational explanation for the marvels of creation which we have studied today. These are the marvels of creation of God. We have a powerful God. So, the question is that, do you believe? that there's a God who is responsible for everything on this earth. Do you believe him? And do you believe that God exists? God is powerful God. He created everything. The heavens, the earth, he created you and me. So my question to you, brothers and sisters, will you acknowledge God as your creator? If you haven't believed God before, with all these uh, uh, evidences that I have shown you today, footprints, of God in creation. Well, you, do you believe him now? And if you believe God now, will you give your heart to Jesus today? Will you? That is the big the question that I would like to ask you. Will you believe uh, Jesus as your creator? And will you accept him uh, in your heart today? Will you accept him to be the ruler of your life? Will you accept him to... Uh, uh, will you give him uh, the authority to take control of your life so that uh, he can he can be the he can lead you only to good things and he can also lead you to a uh, good future so uh, for closing him let's uh, choose a song here that uh, will be sung again by our uh, our uh, beautiful uh, friend singers are from across the border.
again for this beautiful day that you have given us. Thank you for your love, dear Father. Thank you that you continue to take good care of us. And I pray, dear Father, that you will also uh, bless us now as we dismiss ourselves to this program. Thank you also for uh, your footprints that you have left uh, all over the place in this earth, in the heavens, and everywhere, all through the universe, you have left footprints in order for them to tell you that there is one who is responsible in the existence of all these things. We do not believe, dear Father, that we made ourselves. We do not believe that we came by accident. We don't believe that we came from the monkeys. We don't believe that. We believe that uh, there's a creator and it's you. And dear Father, please take good care of us. We came from you. We are here to glorify your name, and we would like to go back to you. So please remember us. Take us to your heavenly kingdom, and let us live with you forever throughout the ages of eternity. And I pray also that you will touch the hearts of all those people that are listening out there, that they will also accept you as their creator, and that they will worship you. So that blessings will come to all of us uh, in the first, second, third, and fourth generation and let's get rid of all these curses caused by sin. I pray, dear Father, that you will now dismiss us with your blessing, which bless us for the rest of the Sabbath day. I ask all this favor in Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. As I mentioned, uh, there is a call again uh, for me to give a Bible presentation, a uh, Revelation uh, seminar on the first week of December. So if you're out there, uh, Filipino pastors uh, or leaders of some groups out there, uh, just watch out. We're going to announce it later on, whatever the date is. Once we uh, figure it out, you can organize your people to listen to our program. It will be nightly, and I will be speaking in Tagalog. I would like to share with you God's wonderful message of saving the lost. We would like to extend our hand. We would like to invite more people to be able to come uh, to Jesus and accept the salvation that Jesus is offering to those who believe him. And as I mentioned, please continue. I thank all of you for being with us here again today. And please continue to support our program. And one way to support our program, I hope we get our uh, 100 uh, subscribers before December, the first week of December, so that we can pitch directly at YouTube. Because right now we have to do everything from Facebook to YouTube. And uh, we have so far 70 subscribers. So if you open, search my name at YouTube, click uh, subscribe. And that red subscribe will turn into black. When turn to black, you have already subscribed. And help us get the 100 so that by the first week of December, we can be pitching directly in YouTube instead of doing it through the Facebook. Again, thank you so much. And have a blessed Sabbath day to all of you. Um, and uh, my wife is out there.